Amass riches in Los Santos by mastering every single business in GTA. Find out which ventures can fill your pockets and which are just taking the mickey in our ultimate GTA Online business review. Join us on an analytical adventure across Los Santos as we delve into the financial fabric of every business, guiding you to your rightful throne in Grand Theft Auto Online's economy. This is our biggest guide um, ever. I think. We'll be going through every single business in the game as of early 2024, looking at what the business involves, solo or team operations, minimum outlay, recommended spend, and time to break even. Focusing largely on the economics, we'll also chart out how each business compares to its counterparts and finally work out which ones will get your money back the quickest. Now there's a bit to go through, and there are shortcuts to the relevant sections in the description below. You can also review the chapters by dragging up from the bottom of the video, and we'll be covering the thank yous and acknowledgements, defining a business for the purpose of this video, standalone businesses, that's things like the auto shop, salvage yard and whatnot, CEO businesses, the executive office and different types of warehouse, biker businesses, vehicle-based businesses, and finally, time to profitability. First up though, this video is largely a meta study built on the back of research completed by dozens of other people over the last few years. So let's start by acknowledging Redditor Keith Armark, the GTA Max Profit website, Sports Skeeter, fellow Aussie and GTA aficionado TGG, GTA Boom, the GTA Series Videos, GTA Database, and the GTA Fandom Wiki. Links to all of these resources are in the description below, and I highly recommend checking them out. Next up, what constitutes a business for the purpose of this video? The way we see it, a business in GTA is any purchase thing that allows us to generate an income. That could be a passive income like the nightclub, business features like the agency contracts, mission unlocks like the casino penthouse, or heist unlocks like the facility. We've excluded the freak shop because you don't have to purchase it, although we do go through the acid lab. We're also excluding things like Operation Paper Trail and Gerard's Last Play because there's no buy-in. So in no particular order, let's start with the auto shop. So owning an auto shop opens doors to a world where high-end vehicle modifications and customizations meet lucrative heist prep operations. With the added perk of a personal modding space, it's a car enthusiast's dream and a clever entrepreneur's goldmine, all rolled into one dynamic enterprise. Income is derived from a few different sources. First up, we have the exotic exports, which has you collecting vehicles from random places around the map. The next option is auto shop contracts, which are mini heist series. These are very good money once you've got your eye in. Finally, if you purchase the upgrades, you can also earn from the customer vehicle customizations. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is $1,670,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 770 grand per hour. Again, once you've got your eye in on those contracts. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of about 3,730 grand, which will pull an income of about 820,000 per hour. So if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in about the same income. So it's not worth it to start with, but probably long-term worth doing the upgrades. On to the agency. So at the heart of Los Santos high stakes underworld, the agency stands as a beacon for those looking to make their mark. Here, you'll align with iconic characters like Chop the Dog and Master Hacker Amani, taking on tasks that range from the daring to downright audacious. It's not just about the missions. With anti-griefer vehicle mods at your disposal, you're equipped to tackle any challenge. Starting with the modest investment, the agency offers a unique blend of action, strategy, and the chance to rub shoulders with the city's elite. Incomes collected from a few different sources again. We have security contracts, which are short free mode missions. There's also passive income attached to these two. There's the payphone hits, which are super simple assassination missions, again, free mode. And we have the contract series with Dr. Dre, which is a fun series that can net some serious coins. 
selling. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is $2,010,000, which will allow us to generate roughly $770,000 per hour, largely from the Dr. Dre contract. Speaking of the Dr. Dre contract, the first run through will net us $1.7 million and take around five hours. And then each run after that will net us about a million dollars and take roughly 90 minutes. So if we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 5.6 mil and the income will be more or less identical. So if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend isn't really worth it as far as return on investment goes, but it does make things a little more convenient long-term. Over to the retro arcade next. So immersed in nostalgia and cutting edge technology, the retro arcade serves as a gateway to the high stakes diamond casino heist, offering not just a playground for vintage game lovers, but a strategic front for planning and executing one of the most lucrative ventures. Beyond its arcade cabinets, it's a base of operations with drones for reconnaissance and the master control center to oversee all your criminal enterprises, blending the thrill of arcade gaming with the depth of strategic planning. Income is largely heist focused. Now, while there is a small passive component from the arcade machines themselves, 99% of your earnings here are pulled through the Diamond Casino heist, which you need a crew for. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 1.23 million, which will allow us to generate roughly 703,000 per hour. We also have the one-time bonus of 3 million, which will take around eight hours to collect. And that's for the first run through of the heist in the correct order. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of $10.6 million, which only bumps our income $3,000 per hour. And if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in practically no worthwhile additional income. So it's not worth spending the extra, although it is quite a neat flex. The brand new Salvage Yard is next, and this is the latest addition to the game coming with the Christmas 2023 DLC. The Salvage Yard introduced us to Yusuf, along with a swath of new mechanics. The Chop Shop brings a new series of contracts, although that's limited to three per week to cap earnings. There's still a lot of fun and can top you out at a million in about an hour. The towing business is where the consistent cash is though. Lots of fun. Income's available from a couple of different sources. First up, there is the mini weekly heist and you can do three per week. It's about 20 minutes each. The other income source is the tow truck business where you um, salvage cars for cash. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 2.27 mil, which will allow us to generate roughly 112.5 per hour. We can also see that weekly bonus of 900 grand to a million takes roughly an hour, maybe a touch longer to collect. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 5.57 million, so nearly double, which will bring our income up to 175,000 per hour. If we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in around a 55% higher return. So yeah, probably worth the effort. Onto the hangar. Nestled in strategic locations across Los Santos, hangars serve as the ultimate aviation storage, allowing pilots to house a diverse fleet of aircraft. More than just storage, they provide a launch pad for smuggling operations, expanding one's criminal enterprise into the skies. With customization options and the ability to manage air cargo, owning a hangar is essential for those looking to dominate the airspace and turn a profit in the vast world above. Income is largely generated from the accumulation and sale of illicit cargo sourced through various air freight and ground missions. Additionally, ownership allows for modifications and storage of aircraft, potentially saving costs on personal aircraft services. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 1.2 million, which will allow us to generate roughly 150 grand per hour if you have a crew for sales. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 3.5 mil or just shy of, which has about the same income. So again, overlaying the two, we can see the increased spend results in not much difference. So it's a nice flex, but not absolutely necessary. Moving on to the high end apartment. These luxurious properties come equipped with a planning room, which is essential for orchestrating heist operations. Beyond their strategic importance, these apartments boast stunning views, customizable interiors, 
and a range of amenities offering players a taste of the high life in Los Santos. Whether you're plotting your next big score or simply relaxing in style, a high-end apartment is a key investment for any serious player. Income is generated through hosting and completing heist missions, with the apartment acting as a planning hub. The more challenging the heist, the higher the potential payout. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is only 200 grand, which will allow us to generate roughly $142,000 per hour. We also have a one-time bonus of 100 grand if you complete the heist with the same crew. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of about half a mil and the income is still 142, 143 grand per hour. So if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in the same income, so it's not worth the upgrades from a return on investment point of view. Heading over to the bunker. This serves as a pivotal base for the military grade operations and research, providing players with access to exclusive weaponry and upgrades. It's a cornerstone for the gun running missions where one can manufacture and distribute illegal arms, turning a substantial profit. Income is primarily from manufacturing and trafficking illegal arms. Completing the resupply missions or purchasing supplies allows for the production of goods, which can then be sold in bulk during sale missions. Additionally, the bunker enables research to unlock special items and upgrades for the weapons and vehicles, which can indirectly benefit income through improved capabilities in various missions. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 1.165 million, which will allow us to generate roughly 30 grand an hour. If we step it up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 4.75 mil, or just shy of, which will pull an income of about 90,000 an hour. And looking at the charts again, overlaid, we can see the bunker results in roughly double the income. So yeah, absolutely worth ponying up the cash. The vast, vast facility is up next. This versatile, high security complex is designed for launching the Doomsday Heist. Beyond its primary purpose, the facility also houses the Avenger and serves as a storage space for certain special vehicles. With an expansive underground space, state-of-the-art command center, and the capacity for various upgrades, including the infamous orbital cannon. Income is centered around planning and executing the Doomsday Heist, with earnings based on heist completion. Looking at the charts for the moment, you can see we have the initial Initial investment of 1.25 mil, which will allow us to generate roughly 87.5 per hour, and that's based on I think it's a 10 to 12 hour completion for the Doomsday Heist. We also have the first time completion bonus for the Doomsday Heist, which tops out at about 1.1 mil per player. Again, that takes about 12 hours to collect. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 4.75 million, but that doesn't really affect the income. So looking at the overlay, we can see the increased spend results in the same income. It's not really worth the upgrades except if you want to orb people. On to the nightclub. Not just a pulsing hub of music and entertainment, but a front for one of the most lucrative passive operations in the game. As the owner, you can promote your club to increase popularity and income, while in the basement, a warehouse operation runs quietly, aggregating products from your other businesses without drawing attention. Income includes the passive earnings from the daily nightclub operations, which can be significantly boosted by maintaining high popularity levels through promotions and DJ management. The true financial powerhouse, however, lies in the underground warehouse management, linking other businesses like cargo, sporting goods, and South American imports to accrue and sell various goods with minimal additional effort, all from a centralized location within the club's basement. Looking at the charts for the moment, we can see the minimum investment is 1,080,000, which will allow us to generate that 50,000 per hour. If we step up to the recommended setup, rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of a whopping $11 million. But that brings the income up to 82 grand per hour with the sales. And looking at the two charts side by side, we can see the additional spend results in about 64, 65% more income per hour. So yeah, absolutely worth it. Let's call in the Acid Lab next. The Acid Lab, tucked away in the modified MTL Brocade 6x6, 
is GTA Online's mobile answer to covert drug manufacturing. This roving facility lets players synthesize and distribute potent products while staying a step ahead of the law. It's a compact, efficient setup that offers flexibility of location, ensuring operations can continue without interruption. Perfect for the entrepreneur on the move. The Acid Lab combines the thrill of illicit activity with the convenience of mobility, making it a unique addition to any criminal enterprise to diversify and expand operations across Los Santos. Income is generated from producing and selling narcotics, with the lab functioning as the central production facility. The lab's income is significantly enhanced through upgrades, which increase production efficiency and the product value, and the entire operation can be managed through resupply missions or direct purchase of raw materials. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 750,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 7,600 per hour. We also have the one-time bonus of 500 grand, which will take around 10 hours to collect, which is done through the DAX missions that can be run every 48 minutes. This is in addition to the income from first-time bonuses on the freak shop. So if we step up to the recommended setup, it's an extra 250 grand, a million in total, and that will pull our income to around 59,008 per hour. So looking at the chart side by side, uh, having done the DAX missions to boost everything and paid the extra cash, we end up at six and a half, nearly seven times the amount of income. So yeah, absolutely worth the effort. Once you've got this done, this is one of the best, mostly passive businesses in the game. Heading to the Arena Workshop. Now the Arena Workshop allows for some bonkers customizations, specializing in transforming vehicles into formidable contenders for the Arena War series. While it's not absolutely necessary, if you wanna dive into the Arena Wars, the customizations available make it worth the effort. Income stems from participating in the Arena Wars events, which include a variety of competitive modes. Success in the arena increases sponsorship deals and unlocks discounts on higher tier mods. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 995 grand, which allows us to generate roughly 48,000 per hour, and that really is just in competition winnings. If we step it up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of $1.9 million, and that still leaves our income at 48 grand per hour. So if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend is pretty much the same, so it's not really worth spending the extra. However, if you'd like to unlock the Bandito upgrades, you can tweak your Bandito, and that may yield some extra funds through the RC Bandito race challenges. Next is the Casino Penthouse. Offering luxury living and exclusive amenities, this penthouse is a symbol of status and sophistication. It grants access to high stakes gambling tables, private cinema, and a personal spa while also unlocking exclusive casino missions. With customizable interiors and stunning views of the city, it's the ultimate retreat for players seeking both opulence and adventure. Income is primarily from hosting and launching Mrs. Baker or the Duggan Contact Mission series as a leader. Looking to the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 1.5 mil, which will allow us to generate roughly 40 grand per hour. We also have that one-time bonus of 850,000, which takes about two hours to collect, and that is for completing the Duggan series of missions in order with the same crew. If we step it up to the recommended amount rather than the minimum, we're looking at a whopping $6.533 million, but the income's still the same. And if we overlay the two, we can see the increased expenditure is absolutely not worth it. On to the executive office. Now this space serves as the nerve center for players looking to establish their dominance in the world of organized crime. It provides a base for operations, allowing for the management of illicit cargo and vehicle dealings. And it's equipped with a helipad, garage space, and customizable interior. It not only streamlines the business operations, but also adds a layer of prestige and functionality, enabling players to coordinate their criminal enterprise more effectively and with style. Income comes from selling mixed export goods, at least directly. There are other money-making methods unlocked with the office, 
price, but the main way to make money directly with it is the export goods, which are available via your assistant. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is a million even, which will allow us to generate roughly 62 and a half per hour. If we step up to the recommended or the more prestigious setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of at least four mil, but our income is still that 62.5. So if we overlay the two, again, we can see the increased outlay results in no additional revenue, so not worth it, although it is a nice flex. Heading over to the special cargo warehouse. Now this is equipped to store a vast range of illicit goods. The special cargo warehouse is the cornerstone for players aiming to master the trade of high value contraband. With the capacity to own up to five of these warehouses, they provide ample space to accumulate inventory from rare artifacts to stolen electronics. Income is generated through the acquisition and sale of special cargo in various buy and sell missions. The process can be grindy, though it promises a solid return on investment with proper planning. Looking at the charts for the moment, we can see the minimum investment is 1.5 million, which will allow us to generate 153 grand per hour. If we step it up to the recommended rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 2.5 million, which will put the income at around 330 grand per hour. So looking at the two side by side, grabbing the bigger warehouses does result in a significantly higher income, almost actually more than double. So well worth the effort. Next up is the vehicle warehouse. This is an essential asset for players looking to profit from sourcing and selling stolen vehicles. This facility allows for the storage and management of a wide range of high-end cars, providing a lucrative opportunity to engage in the vehicle cargo missions. Successful operations can significantly boost a player's earnings, making the warehouse an invaluable part of their criminal empire. Income is mainly pulled through the acquisition and sale of vehicles. It's a bit grindy, but still fun and fairly straightforward. And with a bit of planning, you can pull some solid coin. And if you add a cargo bob to the mix, this becomes a super quick and easy way to earn. Looking at the charts for the moment, we can see the minimum investment is 250 grand, which will allow us to generate roughly 160,000 per hour. If we step it up to the recommended setup, that's a better location and a nicer facility, we're looking at an outlay of about three and a half, but the income is still that 160 per hour. So again, overlaying the two, we can see the increased spend results in the same amount of income, so it's not worth the additional coin. Riding into the motorcycle clubhouse next. This facility features a meeting room for planning criminal activities, various recreational amenities, and a garage for bike storage. It's the starting point for a range of unique club specific missions and activities providing both a social space for members to gather and a strategic base for orchestrating operations across the city the clubhouse is a key investment for players looking to delve into the gritty world of motorcycle clubs and their associated enterprises income is created through three distinct mechanics first is the bar where you do quick supply missions to generate passive income the next is the bike customization shop if you've added it, where you can customize customer motorcycles. The third is the contracts, which are mini heists that pay pretty well. You also need the MC Clubhouse to unlock biker businesses, which we'll go through in a few moments. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see a minimum investment of 200 grand, which will allow us to generate a roughly 40 grand per hour. If we step up to the recommended setup, again, better location and a few extra amenities, we're looking at an outlay of about 979,000, which will pull an income of around 65 grand an hour. And if we look at the minimum versus recommended spends on the same chart, we can see the additional upgrades result in roughly 60% more income per hour. So absolutely worth grabbing. Ramping up to the Coke lockup. This offers players a lucrative venture into the underground drug manufacturing and distribution business. This facility enables the production and sale of cocaine, one of the most profitable passive ish activities in the game. While it's highly profitable, it also
also attracts attention from law enforcement and rival gangs, requiring strategic planning and defence to maintain operations and maximise earnings. Income is generated through the sale of white powdery stuff. All you really have to do here is keep the supplies stocked up, then sell once your product is ready. This can be done solo, but it works better with a crew. Looking at the charts again, we can see the minimum investment is 975 grand, which will allow us to generate roughly $24,000 per hour. If we step it up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 2.87 million, but the income will come up to 72.5 per hour. And looking at the income versus return on investment side by side, we can see the upgrades result in more than double the amount of income. So absolutely worth the extra spend. Next, let's dive into Walter White territory with the Meth Lab. This is a high risk, high reward business. It requires players to secure supplies, manage the manufacturing process and distribute the product while navigating the dangers of rival gangs and law enforcement. The lab's profitability hinges on an efficient operation and strategic defense making it a challenging yet rewarding venture for those willing to delve into the darker side of the criminal underworld. Income is pulled through the sale of blue crystals. There's no passive side to this one, but it can be done solo at least. Although having a crew makes the sell missions much easier. Over to the charts and we can see the minimum investment is $910,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 17,000 per hour. If we step to the recommended rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 2. Uh, 2.9 million or thereabouts, which will pull an income of 41.4 per hour. And jumping back over to the charts again, we can see the additional upgrades result in about an extra 50% worth of, or just shy thereof, worth of income per hour. So yeah, probably worth it. Onto the counterfeit cash factory. So the counterfeit cash factory offers players a gateway into the lucrative world of currency forgery. The operation demands careful management of supply and production process to efficiently generate high quality counterfeit bills. Income is generated through the sale of reprinted paper. Given the only thing you really need to do is keep supplies up and run the occasional sell mission, this is a solid solo business, but is much easier if you have a crew. Looking at the charts, we can see the minimum investment for this one is $845,000, which will allow us to generate around about $17,500 per hour. If we invest in all of the upgrades in a nicer location, rather than the minimum, the outlay becomes roughly two and a half mil, which will pull an income of 37.5 per hour. Now, this is an interesting one and a little different from the rest. If we take a look at the additional income, we're only earning maybe about 15% more with the extra spend. So look, it's still worth it because it's less of a faff having to deal with security so often, but the return on investment is not great. On to the weed farm. Now, while it offers a steady income and a relatively low risk compared to the other criminal enterprises, players must still contend with law enforcement and rival operations. The farm requires a bit of attention, but it's no more difficult than the other biker businesses, making it a popular choice for players seeking a more laid back approach to expanding their criminal portfolio. Income is literally growing on trees. It's not as lucrative as some of the other biker businesses, but it's not entirely rubbish either. You just need to keep up the supplies and do the occasional sell mission and you're good. Having a crew is really handy with this one, but not absolutely necessary. Over to the money and we can see the minimum investment is 715,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 15 grand per hour. If we invest in the upgrades and a nicer location, the outlay is roughly $2.3 million, and that'll bring the income to $34.5 per hour. And back to the charts, we can see we get an additional 30% income on this one or so for the additional upgrade. So yeah, probably worth your time. And I suppose we should look at the document forgery office too. While it's the least lucrative biker business, the document forgery office provides entry into the nuance realm of creating counterfeit documents. Managing this operation involves a careful balance of resource allocation and process oversight to produce undetectable forgeries. Income is derived from selling the um, updated documents. Honestly, this is the lowest earner in the biker stable, but it's still worth your while if you own a nightclub. Just keep the supplies rolling in and run the occasional sell mission and you're good. Having a crew makes this business easier to run, although you could do it solo in a pinch. Looking at the charts, 
and the minimum investment is 650 grand, which generates a pretty ordinary 12,000 per hour. If we invest in the upgrades and a nicer location, that brings us to 1.68 mil, and the income almost doubles at 20,400 per hour. So, and taking a look at both of the charts again overlaid, we can see the additional spend results in 70% more income per hour. So even though this is a really ordinary business, it's still worth spending on the upgrades. And over to the vehicles next, onto the Kasatka. So equipped with guided missiles, a sonar station, and a moon pool to store vehicles like the Sparrow and the Avisa, it's an essential unit for players seeking to expand their criminal enterprise across the sea. Its ability to dive deep beneath the ocean surface offers a unique method of evading pursuit, making it a formidable asset in any player's fleet. Income is largely heist focus as it unlocks the Cayo Perico Island series. You can also do the daily sonar challenge, but honestly, it's not worth your time. Purely active, but very doable as a solo player. Looking at the chart again, we can see the minimum investment is 2,200,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 300,000 per hour. We also have that one-time bonus or the first playthrough at 970 grand, and that takes about five hours to collect. If we purchase some of the upgrades, you're probably looking at more like four and a half mil, but the income still remains at that 300 grand per hour as a solo player. If we overlap the two, we can see the increased spend is more about prestige and a bit of fun rather than actual income. So unless you really want those guided missiles, don't spend the extra money. Okay, time to call in the terabyte. This offers a centralized hub for managing businesses, launching missions, and accessing specialized equipment. Its interior is equipped with a mini master control station, making it easier to manage supplies, sales, and data hacking activities. The vehicle also features a drone station for reconnaissance and a multi-lock missile launcher for defense, enhancing its utility in both strategic planning and combat situations. Income is generated through contact missions. It's a completely active business with no passive income at all, but at least it's solo. Looking at the charts, we can see the minimum investment is 1,375,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 120 grand per hour through contact missions. If we step it up to the recommended setup, the outlay jumps to 2,170 grand, but the income is still at that 120 per hour. So if we overlay the two, you can see the additional spend really doesn't result in anything as far as money goes, but it is a nice flex. The MOC is up next. This is a highly customizable, heavily armored trailer that provides a mobile base for operations, weapon customization, and vehicle upgrades. It's divided into various modules, including a command center, living quarter, and workshop areas compatible with weapon and vehicle modifications. The MOC is also equipped with a powerful defense system, including turrets for protection against threats. Income is available through exclusive contact missions. These pay the same as any other contact mission, but can be done solo. Looking at the charts, we can see the minimum investment is $1,375,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 60 grand an hour. If we decide to do a few extra upgrades, we're looking at roughly 2.82 million, but the income stays the same. So looking at the charts, we can see the increased spend doesn't result in any additional income. So from a cash point of view, it's not worth the extra. Okay, let's call in the Avenger. This versatile, heavily armored aircraft is capable of vertical takeoff and landing, making it a formidable asset in any arsenal. Its spacious interior accommodates a command center, weapon workshop, and vehicle storage, enabling on-the-fly mission planning, weapon customization, and strategic deployment. Equipped with turreted defense, and the ability to go into autopilot mode, it provides both offensive capabilities and a mobile base of operations, offering unparalleled support in aerial combat and ground missions. Income is collected through the console if you've got the upgrade. There's the Project Overthrow series and some additional contact missions. These all require active participation, so no passive stuff sadly, but they can be done solo. Over to the charts, we can see the minimum investment is a whopping 4.9 
$1.9 million, which will allow us to generate roughly 60,000 per hour. We also have a one-time bonus of 500 grand for the project overthrow series, which will take around two hours to complete. If we step up to one of the higher setups, we're looking at an outlay of 6.2 million, but the income is still identical. So not worth the extra cash in my opinion. Finally, the yacht. The super yacht is a symbol of ultimate luxury and exclusivity, offering customizable living spaces, including bedrooms, a bar, and a hot tub on deck. It serves not only as a floating residence, but also as a base for unique missions and parties. Equipped with defenses against unwanted visitors and a personal helicopter for quick travel, the yacht provides a blend of leisure and utility. Income is modest at best, especially considering the initial outlay. The way to earn here is through exclusive contact missions. The payout is about the same as any other mission, so nothing special, but they can be done solo. Over to the chart again, and we can see the minimum investment is a cool $6 million, which will allow us to generate roughly 60,000 per hour. There's also a one-time bonus of 200,000, which will take around one and a half hours to collect as a first-time completion bonus for the mission series. If we step up to the higher spec, rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 8 million, but the income stays the same. So when we overlay the charts, we can see it's not worth the extra spend. So let's put that all together and reorder based on maximum hourly income and the recommended build. Looking at the crew chart and well, actually that's that's a surprise. If you can put together a reliable crew, the high-end apartment ends up giving you the quickest return on investment. The light blue line still represents the time to profitability for the minimum build, with the orange showing the recommended outfitting. This is closely followed by the auto shop, so no surprise there. Special cargo warehouse, and that doesn't include the cost of the executive office though. The agency and the MC clubhouse. Now that's the clubhouse itself, not the attached businesses, so not bad. But heading down the list in order, next we have the executive office. Again, that's the office itself. Kasatka, the Terabyte, Acid Lab, Vehicle Warehouse, The Hangar, Salvage Yard, Coke Lockup, Arena Workshop, The MOC, Bunker, Counterfeit Cash Factory, Weed Farm, Meth Lab, Document Forgery Office, The Avenger, The Yacht, The Night Club, and that's probably because of how long it takes to build stock, and The Casino Penthouse. Next, let's jump over to the soloable list. This excludes businesses that physically can't be operated without a crew, so that's most of the high-spaced ones. Again, based on the recommended spec. We've got the auto shop, special cargo warehouse, agency, motorcycle clubhouse, executive office, the Kasatka, Terabyte, Acid Lab, Vehicle Warehouse, Hangar, Salvage Yard, Coke Lockup, Arena Workshop, MOC, Counterfeit Cash Factory, Weed Farm, Meth Lab, Document Forgery Office, The Avenger, Yacht, Nightclub, and the Casino Penthouse bringing up the rear again. So again, some interesting results. I would have thought the nightclub would have been a bit higher, but if you're only selling full loads, it takes a lot of time to build stock. The auto shop and agency are proper standouts, and the new contracts and custom shop have really pushed the MC Clubhouse into its own. Anyway, that's it for now. Check out the playlist up the top for individual guides on each business, and you can also find guides linked in the description. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.